In this video, I'll demonstrate how to request a PKI certificate from a Windows Certificate Authority. A Certificate Authority, or CA, is at the top of the PKI hierarchy, and its purpose is to issue PKI certificates. Or if it doesn't do it directly, then it will create subordinate CAs, which in turn can issue certificates. Either way, before you can configure a certificate to be used for something like a web server, as in our example, you have to know some details. So before we can request a PKI certificate to secure an HTTPS web server, we need to know the name of the server. So here at the PowerShell command line, I'm going to ping the name of the server for which I want to issue a PKI certificate. It's called serve2012-1, and the full name is serve2012-1.fakedomain.local. So you need to know some of these details before you can request a PKI certificate. In the same way, if you're requesting a user certificate, maybe to digitally sign and encrypt email, you'd have to know some details, things like the user email address and so on. So we now know that we have a valid name that is responding on the network. So at this point, let's go to the start menu here on our server and type cert, C-E-R-T. We're going to start the certification authority tool because this server already has a CA configured. Now in the certification authority tool on the left, I'm going to expand the name of my CA and I'm going to choose certificate templates. Now we don't have a web server template here from which we can issue PKI certificates. So to do that, I'm going to right click on certificate templates on the left and choose manage, which opens up a new tool called the certificate templates console. Now in this list, we've got a bunch of generic templates, one of which in the W's is called web server. So I want to right click on that one and choose Duplicate Template. And under the General tab, I'm going to give this a new name. It's going to be called Custom Web Server Template. Now, this is going to be to generate a PKI certificate, of course. Down below, there are many other things that I can configure, such as the validity period of the certificate. Here, it's set to two years, which is fine. Under Subject Name here, in this case, the name of the server that will receive the certificate, it's set to supply in the request. So that means that when we request the certificate, we'll have to supply the name. There are many other things we could do here. For instance, under cryptography, I might set the minimum key size because remember, when a PKI certificate gets issued, there is a mathematically related public and private key pair. So I'm gonna go into the security tab where I'm gonna click the add button. And for object types, I'll select computers. I'll click okay. And I'm going to type in the name of the server that I want to be able to have privileges to request a certificate from this template. So that server is called serve2012-1. I'll check the name and OK it. And having that name selected here in the ACL for this template, I'm going to make sure I turn on enroll under the allow column. So serve2012-1 is allowed to enroll, essentially ask for a certificate based on this template. I'll click OK and I'll close the Certificate Templates console. Now the thing is, our custom web server template isn't showing up on the right, and that's normal. What you need to do to make it usable is you need to right-click on Certificate Templates on the left, you need to go to New, Certificate Template to Issue, and then choose it from this list. There it is, Custom Web Server Template. We are good to go. Now let's play the part of the server that will request a certificate based on that template which usually would be a different computer, but in our example, we'll just use the same computer. It won't make a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Start menu and type mmc.exe to start the Microsoft Management Console tool. Now what I'm going to do here is add the certificate snap-in so we can work with certificates on this computer. To make that happen, I'm going to go to the File menu. I'm going to choose Add Remove Snap-in. I'm going to choose Certificates on the left. Then I'll click Add in the middle, and I'll choose Computer Account. Next, I'll leave it on local computer and I'll click finish. Finally, I'll click OK. And now you can see that we've got the certificates tool available or added to MMC. So we can now work with certificates for this computer. In the left hand navigator, I'm going to expand personal. Then I'm going to click certificates where on the right, I will see any existing certificates issued to this host. To request a new certificate in the left-hand navigator, I will right-click on Certificates and choose All Tasks, Request New Certificate. On the Certificate Enrollment screen, which is a wizard, I'll click Next and Next again. And here we can see we can choose our custom web server template, but it says more information is required. So I'm going to click on that link. 
Now for the common name, I'm going to type in the name of my server, serve 2012-1, and I will click add. And for the alternative name down below, I'll choose DNS, and I'll put in serve 2012-1.fake domain dot local. Now we pinged that at the onset of this demonstration to make sure it was valid and it was. I'll click add. So essentially this is going to be added into the PKI certificate that gets issued for this server. So I'll click OK and then I'll click the enroll button. And now it says the status is succeeded. So therefore, I'll click finish. I can see that I've got a certificate now in this list that's been issued to this server from the template. I can see the expiration date. I can see the intended purposes, and actually I could even double click on that certificate where I might even go into details to see things like what's the subject name, there's the subject name, the name of the server. If I go further down, I can even see things like the subject alternative name is the DNS name of the server, of course, and so on. So let's actually use that certificate, and this host happens also to be a web server. We're going to do it on the same computer again. In my start menu, I'm going to type IIS so that I can start the IIS manager tool to manage websites. It also actually lets me manage FTP sites, but we're worried about our default website here and securing it with HTTPS. So you need a certificate for that. Well, we've got a certificate. I'm going to right click on the default website and choose edit bindings. Here you can see our web server has a port 80 binding, but not a port 443 binding, which is normally used for secured connections over HTTPS. So I'm going to click the Add button. And from the Type drop-down list, I'll choose HTTPS. Notice it selected port 443. Now I have to choose an SSL certificate, so I'm going to go down and choose the one that we just issued here. Here's the server's common name, serve 2012-1. And I will click OK and Close. Now, if I start my web browser, so I'm going to start Internet Explorer, and if I try to connect to HTTPS colon slash slash serve 2012-1, in this case, dot fake domain dot local, the full DNS name, it takes us right to it. So now our server has an encrypted connection through the certificate that we requested from the Windows Certificate Authority.